All right. Welcome to another episode of Founders Club. Today, I'm very excited to be talking to Jim Reamley. He is a top 1% agent nationwide and has been selling 150 homes per year since he was 20 years old. He's got quite a remarkable story and uh, very excited to pick his brain on all things real estate. Uh, as always, make sure you guys check out the links in the description below. And if you like money and you like real estate, this is the show for you. Hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the inside. Welcome to Founders Club, the show for real estate entrepreneurs. Jim. Yes, sir. Welcome to Founders Club. It's my pleasure to be with you, man. Be here. So for those that don't know, I know you've had a, you know, uh, a, a long, very successful real estate career, uh, you know, a veteran of the industry, a top 1% agent. Um, and I want to get into all that and, and talk, sure. you know, tactics and strategies. But why don't you give us just a quick background on kind of how you got into the business? Yeah, three minute background real quick. I got in the real estate business at 19 as college dropout. <laughs> my buddy talked me into getting my license. I worked in a lumber mill before. Uh, so I pulled green chain, pulling lumber off a chain, literally. Um, so no huge background coming in. I failed my first six months in the business, but kind of figured it out. My second, uh, my full year in the business, I took 150 listings, got listed in top 1% of agents and started crushing it. And then um, opened my first company at 24. Uh, and then I grew that to 17 offices uh, here in the Northwest. We were the largest independent company in Oregon. Um, and then uh, sold that in 06 before the great crash. And then I went to work for NAR, taught for 10 years for NAR, helped another buddy of mine grow a company from 30 agents, became an owner of this company, 30 agents. And then we grew that to 250 agents, three offices, population base of 80,000, doing $1.4 billion in sales a year, 3,000 transactions a year. Um, and then I sold my interest in that a, a few years ago, and now I'm doing brokerage coaching and helping team leaders and brokers um, recruit experienced agents and grow their companies. Nice. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm definitely excited to dive into a lot of that. Um, obviously, that's that's really impressive, and and maybe we can just take a rewind back to sure. you're a college do dropout, <laughs> getting into the real estate business, 19. and then all of a sudden, by 20 years old, you're selling 150 homes a year. Why don't yep. you walk us through kind of what happened and, and how you were able to do that? And what what was it that finally clicked? Well, first of all, I think what you have to do, well, first of all, at 19, people that are younger in the business might be able to relate to this. That you, your sphere of influence is not buying houses, right? We always talk about sphere, sphere, sphere. sphere. Well, right. sphere of influence. My my buddies were out going keggers and you know, just <laughs> doing nothing but buying houses, I'll tell you that. So yeah. I had to figure it out. And so what I did is I started attending back then, um, I started attending every seminar I could get my hands on reading every book, you know, listing all the, all the material I could. And what I figured out is that I had to really commit, commit myself to lead generation and figure out what lead generation would work for me best. So I, yeah. I basically latched on to three different styles, right? So the first thing is I, I really tackled for sell by owners. I became an absolute dominant leader in for sell by owners. I got tackled expired listings, became a dominant leader in expired listings in my market. And then I then pivoted, really did well with those things. But then I pivoted into doing uh, mass mailings. So as my career really began to launch, I did uh, got I ramped up to 8000 pieces of mail a month. And so that really um, fueled my success for sure. And we can dive into each of those categories and I can walk you through exactly what I did if you want. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be actually amazing. So it's Fizbo's. Expired like listings and then dropping mail pieces. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so, let's, let's go through means. those because, you know, I, I have definitely experienced doing all of those things. I was a uh, Mike Ferry agent in, oh, you yeah. know, around, I want to say probably 2005, 2006. But and all we know. did all day was call expired listings for sale by owners and things like that. So why yeah. don't we start there and uh, talk about you know, kind of your approach and, and how you were able to have success with that. Yeah. And I will tell you that, um, you know, the way we did it, and did it back then is all different than when we do it today. And the way I train agents today, I'll, I'll give you both versions. Okay. Perfect. So that people can say, Oh, wait a second. You know, there's some other technology we could apply to make this even more effective today. So um, the first thing with for sale by owners is yeah, everybody has to realize that 92% of them are going to list their house with someone. That's the stat. So 
when you're driving around and you see these for sale by owners, nine out of ten of them are going to work with a realtor. It's just a question of who. It's going to be you or your competitor. If you never make contact, it's never going to be you. So once you realize that and you say, oh, <laughs> these people are all going to list their house. I just got to get in front of them. Then it's just a matter of tactics and strategy, right? So for me, uh, my strategy was very simple. I would reach out and I'd say, hey, my name's Jim. I'm with ABC Real Estate. And I saw your sign on the lawn this morning. I saw your ad in Craigslist. I saw your ad in Facebook Marketplace. I'm sure you're getting bombarded by a bunch of realtors, but I want to tell you this, and this is the key language. Listen, I'm not calling to list your house and I respect your decisions on your own. Okay. So just know that right up front. So now what we got is their defenses are coming down. Oh, okay. Love that. Yeah. Not going to try to take me down and you know talk me into selling. All I want to do is if you'll be open to it, let me take a five minute walk through the house to see if it fits any of my buyers. If you're cool with that, would you be cool with that? 80% of the time with that script, I get into the house. It, and it, it does have to do with your, your tonality. It has to do with how you approach it. People that come in a real monotone and I've got, you know, or come in very cold or very, you know, just like it's, it's like they're a robot. That's not going to work. You have to be warm about it. Um, but most people say yes, 80%. So once I get to the house, people are like, okay, how do I move somebody from A, they are never listening with a realtor to Z, they're signing a contract with me. I mean, what's the, the gap there, right? So, uh, and I've listed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of for sale owners, so I can walk you exactly through this. So very simply, when I get to the house, I say, hey, thanks for letting me take a you know quick walk through the house. I promise you I'm not going to ask you to list the house, and I'm not. Um, but can I ask you just a few questions about you know the house itself? And they're going to say, yeah. yeah. And the best thing, you know, if you wouldn't mind, just give me a chef's tour. Now, I don't know what a chef's tour is. <laughs> I picked it up at some point, but it just sounded good to me, and everybody's like, oh, yeah, I'll give you a tour. And so I would walk to the house and I'd ask them, you know, the very basic questions, who, how, what, you know, Hey, tell me, you know, how long have you guys lived here? We've lived here fires. What have you done to the house since you've been here? You know, did you know people, you know, in the market or what made you choose this neighborhood over all the neighborhoods you could have chosen? Right. So we get into it. You know, I really like this. Did you add this? You should take it away. So what you were doing in this process is we're learning about the house and I'm taking detailed notes. So it doesn't look like I'm just phoning it in. I'm also asking permission to take photos if I if they allow me to if it's a nice house and it warrants it. Um, but by the time we wrap up, I'm gonna I'm gonna be in there five or ten minutes, and usually it's not that. Usually it's twenty minutes to an hour to two hours. Um, and as I'm wrapping up, and I'm gonna again say, hey, I promise I wasn't gonna ask you to list the house, but can I ask you one quick question? If you're not successful selling on your own, do you think at any point you might work with a realtor? Mm, they're gonna they're gonna great say, question. They're gonna say, eh. You know, yeah, maybe most of them. Say, yeah, maybe I'll say, well, how long do you think you might give that? We'll give that two weeks, two months, two years, 10 years. <laughs> what are you thinking? And I say it just that lightly. Smile, laugh, have fun with it. And be like, eh, the most common answer. I'm going to give it a couple months. Totally get it. Here's what I'd like to do if with you if you're, with your permission is I just want to stay in contact with you. Make sure the house is still available every week. Just give me a quick call. And then if I have a buyer, I will definitely bring them over and I'll try to show it and I'll try to sell it. And then if you decide at one point you want to hire a realtor, I'd love to be somebody, somebody interviewed for the job. Is that all cool? Mm -hmm. They say yes. Yeah. And by the way, since I've been here, now I'm going to start adding value. And by the way, since I've been here, uh, I don't know if anybody's done it for you, um, but would you like a list of your most recent competition coming into the market? Now, I could say give them a buyer a CMA, but everybody's offering them CMA. And a CMA is like the ham sandwich of real estate. Everybody's offering a ham sandwich and nobody cares. Right? You give a crap about the CMA. And they don't even need it. They can get that online now. So I'm going to say, would you like to see your most recent competition, including other for sale by owners? And I'll be like, yeah, I would like to see that. Great. I'll shoot that over to you. I'll show you every, I show the top 10 listings that I think you're competing with. And I'll, and I'll tell you that who I think is the strongest competitor, which will be really mm -hmm. interesting for you to see. Mm -hmm. And now I've built some relationship. And then what happens now is the key metric here is that the average for sale owner will list their house. They'll get frustrated enough within four to six weeks. They'll, whatever number they say will go out the window. Most for sale owners come to a realtor in four to six weeks. The other stat behind this is 70% will list with the realtor that contacts them closest to their decision to go with a realtor. Mm. So you could have had a great relationship day one when they first came to market. Doesn't matter if three weeks later they didn't make the decision and you're not right there. The next realtor comes in. It's just easier to go with that realtor that's close to them. So every week now I got to be following up and my follow-up process is key. Fortune is in the follow-up. The path is in the yeah. math, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be on the phone up on once a week. And I'm going to say, Hey, just checking with you guys. How's it going? Any activity going on in the house? They're going to tell me whatever. Hey, listen, I just want to give you a quick update on your neighborhood. Cause I'm, I'm close to this. I've seen this data all the time. 
I just want to say what's happening with your peer group. You got two listings that just hit the market that are kind of similar to yours. I'm going to shoot you those on an email if you don't mind. And you can mm -hmm. check them out and see what you think. We got one that went pending and we had one that closed. And I'm going to shoot you all that information for you just so you can check it out. Um, you know, and then I'm just going to have a conversation light. And that's it. I just, I'm a light touch. I'm not closing, closing, closing. The biggest mistake yeah, agents yeah. make is trying to close these people. You're yeah. never going to close them like that. They're going to run the other way and they're going to list with someone else. It's all about the relationship building. So that's totally. my little, I could go on and on and on about that, but that's my. No, I, that's, that's, that's an incredible pitch and an incredible approach. Um, it's very soft. It's very non-threatening. Yep. Um, it's very friendly, you know, Hey, is, I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to list your house. Like I like that right out the gate because yep. you're taking their defenses down. Hey, is it cool if I just come over and check it out? Maybe it fits one of my buyers. I love that. Cause now you're in the house, you're able to build rapport, you're able to have really good conversations. And then, um, again, I like your, you know, very nonchalant approach of like, Hey, if you were ever going to sell it, like, do you have a realtor that you would use? Maybe yes, maybe no. And then uh, I really like the approach of how you're following up with these people with just, hey, let me show you what your competition is doing. Because, again, you're adding value before asking for anything. And then, like you said, as long as you just continue on that follow up, you know st statistically that in the next month or two, they're going to end up listing with a realtor. And to your point, if you're the closest one that's contacting them when they make that decision, then you're all of a sudden the go-to person. Yeah, it, and it absolutely works. Pardon the quick interruption, but if you're looking for a little extra help growing your real estate business, make sure you hit the link in the description below to book a one-on-one -on -one consulting session where I will personally help you take your real estate business to the next level. Over the last 15 years, I've grown a brokerage to over a thousand agents in multiple states, consistently doing over 4 billion a year in sales. And we've been on the Inc. 500 five times. I would love to personally help you reach your business goals and have the best year you've ever had. Book your session today. And now back to the podcast. Now, a couple of tech things that we can do now that technology has kind of come around the bend. Um, okay. which has really worked for, for my, my students, my coaching students is uh, one question to ask them is in the beginning, Hey, do you mind if I come by and take a quick video of your house? Because a lot of my buyers like me to do a quick, um, just a virtual walkthrough of a house. So we're not wasting your time. I'm not wasting their time, but that'd be cool. So that's another entrance into the house is to ask yep. you a quick video. And by yep. the way, I'll give you a copy of the video when I'm done with it. Yep. So you, you just quite a quick, you know, 30 second video of the house. So that's one, one technique. Another one is cold texting, which is very, very effective. A lot of people don't answer the phone anymore. So mm -hmm. especially if they see it's from a realtor or someone they don't know. Now they should be answering it because they're for sale by owner, but they don't know any better. So they, uh, cold texting can be very effective. I'm putting the same messaging, but I'm putting it in a text. And the best version of a, of a cold text is I'm doing a video cold text. So now mm -hmm. video cold text, I can do it one of two ways. I can do it generically. And this is where I'm going to shoot a video. I'm going to say exactly the same language, but it's going to be generic. So it could apply to every person I own. So that's one way you can do it. And then if I have an assistant, I can farm this to my assistant and say, you're going to track in the red X every new for sale owner that comes to the market. And you're going to send them this uh, video, right? And was like, they could be farming in a million different ways, but they're going to yeah. send that cold video. That's one way to do it. And you're still going to get a pretty good response rate. It's not going to be 80% because you're not, you're not directly talking to them but it might be 30 or 40%. Um, now to make it even better, maybe to get to 50, 60, 70% is you customize it and you you talk about their specific house. Hey, I saw your house come up on the, on the market on first street or whatever. So that's a couple of um, you know technology tidbits that definitely make a difference. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I would recommend is you, uh, you pair this, and this will go right along with expired listings as well, is you pair this with, um, when you're doing open houses in a neighborhood. So if you're doing an open house in a neighborhood, I would highly recommend you call every for sale by owner within a five mile radius. And you just okay. say, Hey, this is Jim Remley, ABC real estate. I don't know if you noticed, but you got a neighbor down the street listed their house with me. We're doing an open house this weekend and we're doing early entry for neighbors. And I just happen to notice you have your house for sale as well. Right. And they're gonna be like, yeah, first of all, I want to invite you over because this is your competition. You probably want to see it. I'd be curious if I were you. Um, but secondly, I got a question for you. If I have a buyer that doesn't quite fit the house that I'm going to have open, would you be open to allow me to show yours? Now, that's like an easy layup 
question, right? Yeah. Uh, and they're going to say yes or no. And if they say yes, my first thing I got to do so I know what I'm talking about is if you don't mind, I can take a quick five minute walk through the house. So it's another kind of easy process there. And that really works, by the way, kind of leading into the expired listing conversation. That really works with expired listings. Hey, I did some research. I saw six months ago you had your house on the market. You know, would you consider an offer if we can get you a cash offer? I'm doing an open house down the street. So that's another entrance into expires. Mm. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, these are these are great, Jim. These are very tactical, very uh, very usable. Um, why don't we shift gears now that you just brought up expired listings? Let's talk about your approach to those because it sounds like you've got some good uh, some good tactics here. <laughs> so with expireds, a little bit of a different animal. Um, you got to expect that expireds are going to be a little bit emotional uh, because you know they've gone through some frustration. They're they're feeling rejected by the market. You know those kinds of things. So. The goal, and this is going to be counterintuitive for most agents, but the goal is to get them to dump their emotional bucket as soon as possible. So I want that anger, that frustration coming out of them as quickly as I can. And I don't take it personally. This is just business. So when I'm calling or reaching out to an expired listing, I'm going to do it in a different way. And I'm going to say, hey, I noticed your listing's been, and I use a lot of different phraseology with this. Your listing's been delisted from the MLS is one of my favorite. <laughs> your listing's been delisted from the MLS. And I just got a, a, a question for you. Did you feel like the marketing that was done in your home previously was effective? Now, what they're going to do is they always blame the other realtor. They never take responsibility. Right. And they're all going to say, no, it was not effective. It was sucked. I didn't like the pictures. I didn't like the description. I totally understand where you're coming from. Let me ask you. I've got a 17 point um, little analysis. I do it. I call my home scoring sheet. It'll just walk you through everything that was done to sell your house. And maybe some of the gaps that you know were missed that could have effectively sold your house for top dollar if you'd be open to it. I'd love to walk you through it and see what that looks like for you. You're going to say yes or no. The, right. the thing about remind, reminder about expired listings is that they're getting hit hard in the beginning, right? There's yeah. there's about, it, when I say hard, it's not every agent in the market, but it is one to 2% of the agents in the market that are the top for dollar sure. going after. Yeah, the sales. first seven days, they're going to get probably 30 to 50 phone calls. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So you got to cut through that. Now, another way to cut through that is to have really stronger scripts than everyone else. So one of the scripts that I like to use is this. I'll say, listen, I saw your house was delisted from the MLS this morning. Quick question. I'm going to pick a number that's 10% at least below their 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 last asking price. So okay. let's assume my market is 500000 I'm going to say, would you have accepted a cash offer for 450 <laughs> Just let it, let it hang, man. And they're going to be like, well, I don't know. Do you have a buyer? Well, the reason I'm calling is because I, I, the buyers that I did have for home in your price range all felt like your home was overpriced. Did Ooh. you price the property or did your or did your agent price the property? This is going to be template. They're going to everybody else is, you know, kissing them every way from Sunday to try to get this listing. You're coming in totally different. And it's actually a huge. It's like a shock to the system. They're like, yep. what? And it may offend them and they may not go anywhere with you. But there's going to be a group of them that will engage and this will get open in the door. So you got to be different. And, and I hate to say it's throwing the other agent under the bus, but the reality is, is that there's a reason why this listing didn't sell. It's overpriced and or it's condition and it could be marketing. It's one of those three things. Right. Right. Um, so those are the, you know, a couple of tactics. Again, a lot of them are not going to answer the phone because exactly what you said. They're getting hammered with 30 to 50 calls in the beginning. So a cold text with these people is way better. These people ah. will respond to a cold text way more effectively. But here's the way you go about a cold text with them, which is different than the FISBO. Because okay. with, with the FISBO, we're saying we don't want to list the property. With the expired list, we're just coming straight at it. We want the listing. So what I'm going to do with a cold text is say, hey, Jim Remley with ABC Real Estate, I'm sure you're getting bombarded by a bunch of agents uh, this, you know, over the last couple of days or this morning. Uh, I have a quick link here for you to give you the top three reasons why your home didn't sell. I would recommend you watch it. And now you're going to do a seven, eight minute video and you're going to say, here's the top three reasons why every home in the market doesn't sell price, product and promotion. And basically, then you're going to flip it and say, here's my listing presentation. Right. You're going to get right in the listing presentation and then they may or may not respond. But the next text I'm going to send a day later, four hours later, eight hours later is going to be I sent you a text yesterday about the three reasons why your home didn't sell. I'm also following up with my complete listing presentation. Uh, if you'd like to review it. And basically it's your pre-listing kit. And now they're going to go through that. So a couple of tactics there. The best absolute strategy with, with uh, expireds is you can use the open house strategy, which is also good. But the absolute best one is when you have an active buyer. So active buyers that you have, 
are like golden tickets. Every active buyer you have, these agents that walk around with that active buyer and are only looking in the MLS, oh my gosh, what a mistake. That active buyer should lead to five, 10 transactions for you. So one of those is going to be for, for sell by owners because every active buyer, I'm going to search the market and say, I've got an active buyer for this for sell by owner. I can make a call and I have a reason to make a call. That's one. But also yeah. with expired listings, I'm going to call and say, I've got a qualified active buyer looking in your neighborhood. Would you be open to considering an offer if I could bring you an offer? Yes. Mm. Great. First step is for me to come by and take a look. Now I'm opening the door with the real active buyer, right? Um, and the biggest pushback you're going to get from expired listings, just to hit that a little bit harder, is you're going to say, why didn't you show my house when the house was listed? Why didn't you bring me an offer when the house was listed? Right. Two things you're going to say. You have to be honest. And my honesty would be, can I be honest with you? And you ask them if you can be honest with them. So can I be honest with you? And you're going to say, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm going to say, are you sure? <laughs> you can say, yeah. And I'm going to say, well, honestly, the buyers I'm working with felt like your house was overpriced. And I'm not sure if you priced it or the other agent priced it. Now, if they, well, many of them will say, well, the agent priced it. I say, I understand that happens all the time in our industry. And we call that buying the listing because we want to make the sellers happy. It's not that they're a bad agent, but they just wanted to get the listing. Right. Right. And so I get it. We all do it as realtors from time to time. But the reality is the market rejected the price. So, I mean, those are a bunch of tactics that I used that, that were successful for me. I love that. Wow. That, that, that's some good stuff. That's it's really good. You know, uh, you do a really good job of taking a different angle than yeah. a lot of the angles that I've heard in the past. And it's, you know, it's very non-confrontational, non-threatening and uh, just a great way to get more deals. Yeah. 100%. And I love, I also love how you're doing the video. I think that's really key video text mess messages. And I'm yeah. guessing you're not recording that every time you just have a pre recorded one that you're sending. Yeah. The generic um, three reasons why your home didn't sell is generic. Your, your, your video of yourself delivering your own presentation, that's generic. So the beauty of this is for the agents that are watching that want to scale, the, the way you scale is by removing yourself from the equation. And this, mm -hmm. this allows you to have your assistants do all this work. Totally. Love that. Yeah. Very cool. And then uh, let's go to point number three, which you said you were dropping a lot of mail pieces. I'm guessing that's on a particular farming neighborhood that you were working and you just wanted to hit it. Or how are you approaching your mail? Uh, mailings, a um, lot of different strategies there. I'll give you a, a few that have been very effective. Um, for, I'm going to go, I'll go back in time just for you. So your audience can kind of enjoy this for a second. When I started in the real estate business before <laughs> MLSs were computerized, that's how old I am. Um, and before in my market area, the entire county's database was still on microfish. So I hired an assistant who sat at an old computer with Excel DOS and took the entire, and we bought a microfish machine. I bought all the microfish and for all the, all the county records. And she physically, hand transferred every county record into our computer by hand. We computerized the county's database before the county had. So we took all that. So the reason I bring that up is because when things are hard, that's good. Everything that you look at, you say, this is beyond my capability. You need to stretch into it and ask yourself who, not how. Some of you are going to say, I can't do these tech things that they're talking about. That may or may not be true, but somebody can. And you just got to find your who, who can help you yeah. get it done. Right. And so we figured it out and we we're the first in our market to figure it out. I had one of the first teams really in the nation and we built this team around doing mailings. And so we then we began to ramp up and do mailings and we, we did different niche mailings and things. But the most effective mailing we found is, first of all, it's not postcards. Throw out all your postcards. Postcards don't work. It's a complete waste of time and money, in my opinion. There's a couple that work, but by and large, postcards are just a waste of money. Because you literally, you can watch it happen. You go walk into any post, post office and you watch people sit with their with their mail and they literally just write into the trash. Yeah. Uh, postcards, right? It just, they don't even look at it. And then they take right. the, the actual mail and they take it and they take it home. So what we're doing is we're doing number 10 envelope, white envelope, right? And then we're doing a letter that goes inside. And the letter, here's what the letter is. It's high bond paper, thicker paper than normal. It's uh, digitally signed and it's color stationary. So it looks professional. It's not some copy, photocopied thing. Every letter is personalized. Um, so you're doing a mail merge with everything. And every letter is never more than one page. Everything's one page or less. Okay. Mm -hmm. So one thing, and the way you look at this is it's three paragraphs. Believe me, I've done, this is a science. 
is three paragraphs, two to three sentences per paragraph. That's it. So some, when somebody looks at your mailing, they can almost read it without reading it. It's that clear and simple. 14 points. Easy to digest. Yeah. Easy to digest. So simple. It's almost so easy, right? So now who am I targeting? The number one target for every, everyone in America today, right now, this year, 2024, should be empty nesters. People like me, 54 years old, four kids out of the house. We just went through the whole situation. I had a 4,000 square foot house. We like, we don't need this house anymore. Scaled down to a smaller house and I bought another house. I'm sitting in here in Vegas, right? So it's like, it, I'm at like a classic person that you would target, right? Low mortgage or no mortgage on the house. So I'm not interest rate sensitive. I'm taking advantage of the market being a little bit of in a dip right now. This is, this is the classic person. They're your most likely seller in 2024 is empty nesters. So who am I going to target? I'm going to target people that have owned their homes 10 years or longer. You know, it's hard. You can't really target by age, but you can target by people with no mortgage. You right. can target with people with low mortgage, target people that have owned their homes for 10 years or longer. These are all ways to get to those empty nesters, right? Now, when I'm doing a, a mailing, what's the mailing going to be, right? Again, your number one mailing will be a, a mailing where you have an active buyer that you're working with that, that wants a specific neighborhood. This will unlock more opportunities than any other mailing. And just to give you the numbers behind mailings, and I have studied this like a science, is this. For every 100 pieces of mail you send out, you're going to average one positive response. You'll get more than that, but one positive response. For every eight positive responses you'll get, you'll average one instant listing like now, today. So that's 800 pieces per instant listing. What does that cost you? It costs you about $1,500-ish in that range. Um, now, would you trade $1,500 for one listing? We all yeah, would. I think, I think would. most people would, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're making 10 grand, 15 grand on a deal. So absolutely. But And you're forgetting that you still have seven other hot leads here. They're just not listing today, right? Mm -hmm. In our statistics and our coaching, what we found is that of the seven that we get, the other leads, we're putting them into a drip campaign through our CRM, we're dripping on them with video drips, by the way, a whole nother conversation. So video drips, and then two to three of those come to market in the next year. So we're probably getting three to four listings as a result of every 800 pieces going out. Mm. And the mailings are going to be focused around very simple scripting. Hey, I've got a buyer looking in your neighborhood. We just looked at the home over at, and I'm going to be highly specific, 115 First Street. We, I also noticed you own a home on 123 Johnson Street. Would you ever consider selling for the right price if we gave you plenty of time to find your dream home, if we were working with a cash buyer or, or a buyer that's been fully qualified for your home? Pretty mm -hmm. simple. That's it. You're going to say yes or no, right? So that's one That's one technique. Another technique is targeting, and this one's been so effective, is targeting people that have, uh, first of all, there's a new study out from Zillow that shows that 23 to 22% of the population that owns a home today is considering selling in the next three years. And there's a massive sell to, built up seller um, kind of demand out yeah, there. That the pent up demand, for sure. Right? It's been held back. And yeah. what's been holding it back, a lot of it, is interest rates. So there's been a lock in effect with interest rates, everybody having low interest rates. That's starting to fade. And the reason why it's starting to fade is people are just sick of being in their houses. There's only so long we're going to stay in their houses. The average tenure in a house is 10 years. That's higher than it's been in my entire career. My entire career was six years, four decades it was six years. Just in the last few years, it's gone to 10 years because of these lower interest rates. But people are just sick of being in their houses. So Zillow factored that in. Even when people with interest rates below 5%, 22 to 23% of them are coming to market in the next three years. So when you're driving through a neighborhood, think about that. Every 100 homes you drive by, 22 to 23 of those are going to be on the market in the next three years. It's a massive, yeah. massive. Yeah. It's like an iceberg. We're only seeing the tip of the iceberg of the listings on the market. There's a bunch of sellers that would, homeowners that would consider selling. So how do you tap, how do you tap them? We tap them with a letter that says this. Hey, my name is Jim Remley. I'm with ABC Real Estate. I'm doing some research in your neighborhood. I see the own house at 123 Johnson Street. I have a quick question. Will this be the last house you ever own? No one thinks that, by the way. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I don't care if you're 95 years old. You never think this is the last house you're ever going to own. Yeah. And then here's where I kick, here's the, like a real kicker with this letter. You say this. Um, if you would consider selling your house but don't want to, quote, unquote, list the property on the open market, I totally understand. But if you would consider an offer, please reach out to me by mail, text, email to let me know you would consider an offer on your property. Boom. Mm. That's it. Two or three paragraphs. Now you're going to say, Jim, I want listings now. Get over that. What you want is you want to fill a pipeline and you want to fill a pipeline through the, with the top of the funnel. This is top of the funnel, people. You're going to put them into your drip campaigns. 
and they're going to incubate, incubate, incubate. And guess what? They're going to start coming to the market in the next six months to, to a year, two years. If you're doing the right job, you got hundreds of people in there. You're going to crush it. Now, there's some other things that you might look at, too, which is um, using uh, technology to help you to really figure out who are the people that are most likely uh, to sell. And I think this is a really interesting and important thing to look at because there's some people that are more likely to sell than others. Right. So I want to give you a, a website um, that you can look at to do this. Um, I'm just pulling up here. Here it is. Uh, Inscope. So it, and I'm going to give you the example that they give, which is they went to Decatur, Illinois. They fed into the system 35,000 homeowners. And what they do is they study 500 data points. And they say, based on these 500 data points that they're watching about all of us on the internet, our activities on the internet, these are the people that are most likely to sell. Of wow. the 35,000 people. And what website was that? It's Nscope. N-S-K-O-P-E. N, -S -S -E. N like the letter N, scope. And of the 35,000 people they fed into the system, 2,000 uh, were identified as highly likely to sell in the next year. So then they tracked it and they went back and they said, okay, over that year period, who actually listed? Of the 2,000 people, of the 35 total that they fed into the system, of the 2,000 that they fed in, 23% actually came to market in the next year, 463 listings. Now imagine wow. yourself that you, if I had a, if I had that system, I mean, that's like a golden goose kind of situation where I can feed in this uh, and get this result of who is most likely to sell because you're going to get a huge bang for your buck there, right? So it's all most about definitely. targeting, right? Targeting, targeting, yeah. targeting. Now, let me, give you, yeah, let me give you one more technique that one of my coaching students just turned me on to, which is absolutely huge, which is this. When you're doing your live buyer mailings, <clears throat> which is the most effective mailings, uh, to add in one sentence. And the sentence is this. I'm going to read it because he just gave it to me. Currently, the county has your property assessed value at blank. But in our local market, that's typically inaccurate compared to true value. That sentence uh, that he plugged in, he did, he did, and here's his results. He did 425 mailing letters. He got 12 to 15 calls in reply. Uh, he previewed five homes, listed one home the next week for a million one. And then he's got all these other leads coming in. But every single one of these people that called mentioned that sentence, the mm. assessed value sentence, because they all think it's wrong, right? Um, which get, just brings us back to the mail merge factor. You've got to do be really being highly specific in mail merging all of your letters. Yeah. So the data that you're putting into that Nscope site, is that just like homeowners in your city getting a list yeah. and so feeding you it? You can pull a list like, uh, you know, I use the Red X a lot. So the Red X, I can pull it from there. I can pull it from uh, PropStream would be another big one. There's, there's yeah. you know, big companies that will do this for sure. you. And you just feed it through and then it, it identifies who's the most likely to sell. There's a few companies yeah. that do it in, in addition to Nscope. But I would definitely That's look at true. predictive tech. Yeah, that's yeah. very cool. I mean, talk about an unfair advantage. I mean, if you're if you're just mailing to those two thousand, it seems like you're you're virtually guaranteeing to get better results. One hundred percent, right? Exactly, one hundred percent. Yeah, that's amazing. Hey there, I just have a quick favor to ask. If you're getting value from Founders Club and you're watching on YouTube, just give us a like, hit that subscribe button. If you're listening on iTunes, leave us a five-star review. These things are free to do and it really helps the channel and it also helps us be able to bring better guests for you in the future. Now back to the episode. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's great stuff. Thank um, you. Anything else you want to add to that? Well, in terms of my success early on, I, what I did with all those kind of prospecting lead gen systems is it all fed into building my my funnel, right, and building my database of people. Right. Um, and and you know over time, what you, what all of our goals should be in real estate is you want to build a database of your sphere of influence because you know all the fancy sales funnels in the world will not replace your <laughs> your sphere of influence. It's a good starter for people that don't have a sphere like I did when I was 19, but eventually totally. you may want to be building this out. So then you, you start to get to a point where you're 90% referral based. I coach some of the most successful agents in the country, people doing 70, 80, 100, $140 million in production. Every single one of them is 90% referral based, but they didn't start there. You know, they had to ramp up to it, doing all the kinds of things we're talking about today. So, you know, my biggest thing for agents is build that database and get that database set up so that it'll just keep giving you a steady stream of business over time. So that, that, that'd be my messaging. 
Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Every year in the NAR report, when they talk about where business comes from, it's it's almost always, you know, 80 to 90 percent sphere of influence. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, the quicker 100%. you can build that, the better. Now, there are a couple of other hot areas right now I could talk about if you want to for just a minute. Yeah, yeah, let's uh, go. So one hot area I, I think and I, I know in studying this is high end rentals. So right now, what's happened with the rental market is it's flattening out and a lot of areas rents are declining. And people say, why would that be? It's been it was shot up through COVID. It was like a vertical line in COVID. The reason why rents are declining in a lot of markets is because we just had the last year, 2023, was a 40 year high, 40 year high for new construction of apartment buildings in the country. We added 600,000 units. And the year before that, we added 400,000 units. So a million units hit the market. Right. That's and a of lot. Course, <laughs> That's going to absorb a lot of the rentals. Now, you might say, well, that's not high end rentals. Yeah, but it, it filters through the pyramid. It's like anything else, you know. So what happens is now you get somebody that's putting their house on the market for rent uh, and their their mortgage is five grand a month. Their mortgage is six grand a month and they're trying to rent it for seven or eight. And now it's like crickets where a year or two ago it would have been like a, a line out the door to try to rent it. They start suffering at, at, at the first month. They're suffering the second month. They're kind of in desperation and third month. They are just they're having a real problem. Full so, panic mode. <laughs> panic mode, right, exactly. So what you can do is start start farming and watching uh, property management websites in your market area. Start tracking these high-end rentals. And if you see one that's been on the market longer than 30 days, that's one to target. And I would just I would just give them a call and say, hey, I noticed you have a, you know, you can find their information on the Red X. Red X has got 70% of phone numbers, cell phone numbers, even for states and everything else. So in corporations, you can they'll get drilled down pretty good and get your cell phone numbers. So I call them and say, hey, my name is Jim with ABC Real Estate. Notice you got your property listed for rent over, uh, you know, with ABC property management firm. Quick question. Uh, would you consider selling that and reinvesting it in some other asset class rather than trying to rent that property? Would you rather have it sold? And they're gonna, a lot of them are going to say, well, yeah, I would rather have it sold. Let's talk about that. I, you know, I, I did some research before I called you. I noticed, and here's the kicker, the big, big, big way you're going to turn these people towards you. I did some research before I called you and I looked at the neighborhood. You know, there's been three properties sold in your neighborhood in the last 30 days. And mm. now I got their attention, right? So now we have a conversation. So high end rentals are huge. One more um, huge market right now, which is people aren't really keen on this, but it's commercial property. Commercial property is cratering in the country at, a, at, at the macro scale, maybe not in your city or neighborhood, but right, at right. the macro scale, the big scale, commercial is, is cratering. Uh, for a lot of different reasons. And prices are lower now than they were before the pandemic. Unlike houses, which is shot to the roof, yeah. commercial prices are depressed, right? So why is this an opportunity? It's an opportunity because if you're driving by commercial buildings that are vacant, you're driving by uh, you know, other properties that you're like, wow, what's going on with that? These are opportunities for you to make calls to those potential sellers and get these listings. Or let me flip this over on its head. And that is you start working with investors to buy properties that are at a depressed price because they won't stay like this forever. Every market cycles. So let me give you the best strategy for this. When you go through your sphere of influence, highlight every single person that you know that owns a business that has a location. Every single business that, that you know that, own, that owns or rents a location, this is a target. And here's a conversation you have with them. You call them and say, hey, I'm Jim. I was just looking at all of my friends and I, you know, you've owned your business for several years. Do you own that location or are you renting there? They're going to say one of the two. They say renting. You might not know this, but commercial is prime right now. It's we're at depressed valuations for leasing and for buying. Would you rather own than rent your location? Let's get you into an ownership position. I'm telling you, people can buy for 50 percent of what they bought, you know, four or five years ago. That's really good. Yeah, it's a great, great tactic. And if they already own their location, say, is this a great time for you to add another location? Because right. this is a prime time for you to own another location. Now you get two or three buyers in your corral. Right. That are like, yeah, I do that. Now I got reasons to make the calls to these people that have vacant properties and you can hammer them right now and get a great deal for your client. So there's a, yep. there's a huge opportunity. There. Yeah. I love that. Wow. Yeah, it's true. You know, the, a lot of people have written off the office industry, but uh, I, I keep saying, I think there's going to be huge opportunities there because like you said, you know, there's, there's less people renting, the rents are less, Owners are panicking. Loans are going up. Loans are coming due. There's all this distress in that market, and uh, it's. I think it's going to be a great way to just pick up some, you know, property to own. Number one, but to your point, like. 
go to those people that are renting and, and say, hey, if you could own for the same amount of money or, you know, or, or close, wouldn't, would you want to do that? And a lot of them would say yes. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah. And Especially there's also here. like, you know, there's also favorable financing out there for business mm -hmm. owners. They could look into like getting SBA loans and, and different things to, to help them qualify easier. And, uh, I see that being a really big opportunity. hundred percent. Great opportunity for sure. Very cool. So one thing I know that you're also, uh, really big on really good at is, is kind of helping brokers grow their, their, their uh, brokerages, team leaders grow their teams. So kind of at like what point would you suggest an agent to start thinking about doing the team thing? And then let's talk about kind of how you recommend going about growing the teams. Great question. So uh, I look at, I, I use the bakery example. When people come and say, Jim, I want to form a team. My first question is, why do you want to form a team? And most of them don't have a great answer other than they see the top producers in the market are, are team leaders generally. And like, I got to just got to model that. But yeah. that's not a reason to start a team, right? So the reason to start a team is that you have, number one, more leads than you can handle personally. So mm -hmm. if you are not a rainmaker today and you're not generating a ton of leads more than you can handle personally, you have no business starting a team. So let's just start there. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> so yeah. here's why people join teams. So you got to look at it from both sides of the fence. The reason why people join teams is because if they were a successful salesperson and could do it all themselves, they would just be a solo agent. There's no yeah. reason for them to join a team. The reason they join a team is A, they want lead flow from the team leader. B, they want systems. And they also might want support. And they might also want to benefit from the lifestyle that a team provides where they don't have to work this right. every weekend and every night. There's other reasons, but leads are going to be number one. So I have Without to Without a doubt. Out. Yeah. So, totally agree. <laughs> so I got to figure out my lead flow. And here's what it cannot be. And I'm, and I'm lecturing team leaders and I'm coaching team leaders around this all the time. Five or 10 years ago, it could be this. Today, it cannot be this. So five or 10 years ago, you could go and buy Zillow leads and buy Realtor.com leads. And you could create an ROI around buying those leads for five grand a month and then pulling them into your team, farming out to your buyer's agents, making sure those buyer's agents are working them. They closed one to three percent of the deals and you'd make enough money to pay for that Zillow bill and also make some money on top of it. Guess what? That doesn't work anymore. It, it, that that model is blown up. It's been blown up for two or three years, and team leaders are just just won't let go of it. But there's a negative thirty two percent return on Zillow leads now. Negative. So for every dollar you invest, you're losing another thirty two cents. So you these team leaders are listening to me. You can pretend it's not happening. It's happening. So you have to pivot and say, I've got to take full control over my lead gen, or I am not going to survive in a team format for the next five years for sure. So you got to redesign your team structure and focus it around other ways to generate leads. And all of us, guys, if you just get training and coaching around this, you can generate leads for $10 to $20 a lead. You do not need to be paying $150 a lead or paying 35% of your deal out to all these companies, right? They're generating leads. You can do the same. You just got to find out who you got to find your who, right? If you can't do it, if you, how is not your issue, find your who that will do it and you can figure it out. So yeah. first thing is got to be a rainmaker. Second thing is I got to have enough of those leads to flow and to, to hand them out. Then I have to have somebody in my team. My first hire should be an admin person, in my, my opinion. Maybe starts as your assistant, then generates, then then graduates to office leader or admin. Then I start with some, some buyer's agents. Then I might add a listing coordinator or a listing agent to, to the mix. And that's kind of going to be my, my team build out. That's my opinion. Yeah. No, that's perfect. And great advice, too, because I couldn't agree more that – you know, the people that join teams, they're really joining teams. I mean, like you said, there's a few other reasons, but they're much less. It's really, can you give me deals to help me grow my business? That's right. why people join teams. 100%. So I yeah. love that. Yeah. Um, okay. One thing that uh, I've heard come up a few times in this conversation is the importance of your sphere and um, how a lot of business comes from your sphere, whether you're a team leader or a solo agent. Um, but why don't you talk to us about how you're coaching agents on getting deals from their sphere of influence? It's a great, great question. So your sphere, here's the way to look at your sphere is, uh, there's there's numbers behind this, and I'll run them really quickly with you. So for every 10 people in your sphere, as long as you're touching them 20 to 50 times a year, you'll average one closed deal. So when I'm coaching agents and I'm coaching team leaders, I'll say, let's just open up the hood 
If I'm up under, under the hood of your business, tell me how many people in your sphere right now. And if there's any wavering, I know that they're not control of their business. So they say, well, it's around 200. Well, is it 200? Is it 201? Is it 195? What's the number? So if you yeah. don't know the number, number one, you don't have a CRM because a CRM will tell you the number and you should know that every day. Yeah. So I need to know what is my sphere count today? Because it's going to tell me pretty much almost to the penny what you're going to make because it's already baked into your 2024 performance. Mm -hmm. So when agents come to me and say, I've got a hundred percent sphere, I can say you're probably going to close nine to 12 deals this year. That's probably it. Unless some miracle happens and you get some, you have some outside pipeline. That's probably what it's going to be. You, and you come to me and you say, I want to close 30 deals this year. There's only one solution. The solution is I got to have 300 people in my database and I'm touching them 20 to 50 times a year. Now I might right. add them, add them because I'm doing for sale by owners and expired listings. I'm doing all this other stuff, but eventually yep. I'm getting into my sphere and I'm incubating them over time. Right. Yep. And then we have to have um, a contact matrix to hit that 20 to 50 time threshold. Right. People are like that's overwhelming. It's not really that overwhelming. Um, here's what that's going to look like. The 20 to 50 times we're contacting them. We can we can hit one we can hit twelve of those out of the park with just an email newsletter, which ninety nine percent of agents are not doing. So all of us should be doing an email newsletter, constant contact, Mailchimp, send in blue, pick your platform. But here's the thing with the email newsletters is, you have to have video as a component to it. If you're not doing video, don't bother. You have to have totally video agree. as a component. So yeah. that, it's, it's going to be dead on arrival unless there's video. So video is a part of it. Then the other matrix is going to be I need to be talking to my sphere of influence personally at least two, three, four times a year. So I got to map that out. I need to be sending personal texts to my people two to three times, four times a year. That's a text directly to them. It's not mass text. I'm going to be doing uh, personal emails two, three, four times a year to every single person on my database. And here's the new one that every top agent's doing is a video text to every single person on their database twice a year minimum, like to see you do more. A lot of my agents are doing it every quarter. Here's another big one that's missed by most agents. Most agents aren't doing this, and it's so critical, is doing an event at least once. I'd like to see twice a year, once in the spring, yeah. once in the fall, yeah. an event. And it's a great reason to make contact with people. Exactly. Um, and then the other big thing that most agents are missing is just being super strong on social media. So you have to have high visibility, which includes video. I, we use a 522 model, five posts a week, two videos, two stories. And if you're doing that, great, then raise it 1044. But you got to be visible. And if your agents are uh, listening to this and they're saying, I'm still not getting enough traction out of my spheres of influence. The reason is, here's the number one reason. They don't look at you as a friend. So mm -hmm. this is the bottom line. When I'm doing business with people that are doing 100 million, 80 million, 70 million dollars in business, all of them, when they list a house, they say, I just listed my buddy's house. I'm, I'm, out, I'm out showing my house to some friends of mine. They don't look at their clients as, as like notches on a belt. These are all relationships that are key to them. This is the difference of mindset with a top producing agent that's high, high level and a low producing agent. Low producers look at people as transactions. High producers look at them in relationship status. Yeah. So everybody in your database, I want you to think about your database. Don't think about it as names on the list. Think about it as relationships and say, who are, the, who are these people in my database? Who of them looks at me as a friend? Who are these people look at me truly as a friend? Who could I call at 10 o'clock at night and have a conversation? When people don't look at you as a friend, they are not going to refer to you. Friends refer friends. And this is the, the biggest thing. I give you one more strategy that is the most underused strategy, the least expensive strategy, but the most effective strategy about everything I've just talked about is doing networking every single week with three to five people, meaning I'm breaking bread, having coffee. So coffee, breakfast, dinner, drinks, whatever, three to five times a week with people in my sphere so that we get close to each other and they're, we're friends. We're, we're having yeah. a close relationship that alone will unlock and blow up your business. If you do nothing else, yeah. anything else yeah. we want to talk about today, just that will unlock your business. I love that. Yeah. I mean, uh, so much value there. Uh, and, and what I like about your approach to your sphere, and this is something that we talk about all the time is you're hitting them in multiple touch points in multiple different ways. Um, you know, to your point, you do those two events a year. Now you've got a reason to call. You've got a reason to text, um, you know, the uh, videos on their video text messages on their birthday. Things like that are super easy. Um, and so you're almost automating the touch points um, to be done in an easy way. And you're staying in front of them on all the different channels, the social media, the direct, the phone, the email. Um, and just over time, like you said, 
you know, for every, I think every 20 people in your database, you should expect a deal. So a su- asterisk, as long as they know you like you and trust you. Right. So don't just start dumping people into your sphere and hoping that number is going to go up. But um, as you genuinely build your sphere over time, I think that's just a, uh, a massive way to win long term. 100%, 100%. One thing, uh, just in terms of tech real quick, we, we also recommend a prog- program out there called Sly Broadcast. Which I, I don't recommend you use this all the time, but twice a year, you know, maybe three times, but generally twice a year, you can be very effective. This is where you take your whole database, you take their phone numbers, you dump it in, and then you can send a voicemail. It's a voicemail drop system, basically. You can do a voicemail drop. It will drop into every one of your person's databases. And it could be something like we got July 4th coming up. You could say, hey, just want to say happy July 4th. I'm thinking about you guys today. Hope you're having a fun time and enjoying your family yeah. and friends. Bingo. Yeah, now they right. may even know it's a, it's a slide broadcast or a broadcast or it's a generalized voicemail, but they still appreciate the touch. And I've done totally. this. I do this with my own agents and they love it. They know it's a slide broadcast because I talk about yeah. it, but they still yeah. like the fact that I did it. Right. So that's another technique. Yeah. And it shows that you're tech savvy. I, I got a fully second that. I love slide broadcast. Uh, it's great for voicemail drops. It's great for text drops, anything yep. like that. Um, but even if it's just like you want to say, you know, happy July 4th, you can record the message and send it out to 300 people with just a few clicks. Um, also going to put a shameless plug in here for a uh, software that we developed called Referral Suite, which is basically specifically designed to help agents market to their sphere of influence. It does video email, it does direct mail, it includes social media templates for every day of the week. It includes a two video scripts per month. So for the people that don't know what to say or don't know what to post, um, these are all Canva templates that are plug and play, uh, video scripts that are plug and play, and just make it really easy to get those touch points out to your database. Love it. Love it. Um, so anyway, Jim, dude, this has been been amazing. I think there's been a ton of value here. Um, for those that want to learn more from you or connect, how can how can they do that? So my specialization is uh, brokerage coaching, but I do coach agents. So we got a great coaching system for agents. But uh, if everyone wants to hop over, they can check us out at eRealEstateCoach.com. It's E like elephant. We've got an amazing blog over there that's completely free and lots of video content. Uh, we have some free services for agents that can plug in. Uh, and for brokerage owners that they want to do get, get involved, that we have a, a recruiting presentation over there, a two-hour recruiting webinar. Going to give them tons of ideas on recruiting um, agents for their teams or for the brokerages. So hop in there and check it out. That's killer. Yeah, highly recommend. If, if there's even just a percentage of what we talked about today in there, I'm sure it's very high value and very little fluff. Um, so again, really appreciate your time to everyone listening out there. As always, if you like money and you like real estate, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot, Jim. Thank you.